Welcome back. Today is January 1, 2018, and we have in front of us the first repair of the year. This is an iPhone SE that only has a tag on it that says water damage. So we are going to diagnose it and see if we can't either fix it or turn it into a data recovery. Plugging it into power on the port of power, we are getting a zero reading, so we're going to open it and see what the DC power supply says. Let's open it. Instant, straight to two amps. So we have a short on the board. Let's find it. So the good news is, this liquid trigger is not pink, and neither is this one. So if this is liquid damage, it must be very minor. So this could be an easy one to fix, if we can find out where the short is. This is a handy trick for remagnetizing screwdrivers. The logic board is free. So before we remove the shields, this has zero signs of liquid damage. So I'm going to take that little guy off, and I'm going to make a guess that if there is liquid damage, it is going to be under here. Let's go ahead and take that back shield off. Alright, nice and pretty. So let's get under the microscope and take a look at what is going on with this board. So starting at the top, let's zoom in a little bit. So far everything looks nice and healthy. I see zero liquid damage anywhere. That is odd. Well, now that we have the shields off, this board is cooled down. Let us inject some power and see if we can figure out where it's getting hot, because it should be getting hot somewhere. It feels like we're getting hot right in here. Let's try alcohol. So I'm just going to dabble the do. Oh, what is that? So the heat is coming from this guy, and that is Q2300. Now he does not have a foot on ground, so he cannot be our problem child. But I do see all these little tiny microscopic beads over here. What is this? Where do these little tiny balls come from? They're all over the place. Okay, so we are going to actually take off Q2300 and bridge him so that he doesn't get hot and we can figure out where the heat is actually coming from. Got him out of the way, put him safe and sound right there. Let's see if we can just bridge these two lines together. Well, that's harder than it looks. Ooh, I think we did it. Oh yes. <laughs> they are definitely bridged together. All right, we are good to go. So now, this is our VCC main cap. Let us test it. And we're showing a, a dead short VCC main, 0.7 ohms to ground. Now, inject our voltage again and see if we can isolate where it's getting hot. Board is cooled down, so here we go. I feel like I'm getting heat near the bottom half of the board. There is absolutely nothing that is standing out as being hot. So. We're going to give it the old freeze test method and see if we can find anything. There is nothing blatant showing up. I wonder if I need to take off these shields and go deeper. So let's let our board warm up and we'll come right back to it. So because I couldn't really detect any heat with my fingers and my face method detection and even with the freeze spray, nothing that was standing out of me. Took off the backside shield here. There is one capacitor that's on VCC main and it's that little guy right there. So we're just gonna give that guy the old test -a and see what happens when we hit him with a little bit of cold and nothing. So he's not bad either. So we're gonna have to go and look at everything on VCC main. See if we can't find this short. So it's definitely not any of these little guys, and it's nothing on this side. So we're narrowing it down to either under the CPU shield. Let's see if there's anything under the CPU shield that is on VCC main. And there is not anything under the CPU shield. So it has to be on the bottom side of the board here. 
I see nothing getting hot. Nothing at all getting hot. So, what ICs have VCC main under them? Okay, so I've been digging around and looking for anything I can figure out that may be wrong with this. And because I can't find any heat uh, by injecting the voltage through the connector, battery connector, I'm going to start checking some of the caps on VCC main in some certain areas based on some advice I received. And we're going to see if we can't find one that is bad and solve this problem that we have with this iPhone SE. And I'm going to start right here and I'm going to clear out this little cap here and we're gonna we're gonna just kind of test this little guy uh, because he is on VCC main he's tiny he could definitely easily be shorted and not giving off any heat so let's clean out around him and see if he is our bad guy if not then we will systematically start looking for where the problem really is all right let's test it still short I'm gonna hide this little guy over here so I can reuse him and let's take the next one so before I go ripping all of these little caps off I'm going to just check under this audio I see as I was told by a little birdie there's a possibility that that could be the problem and since I can't get heat to show up, even by injecting voltage straight onto VCC main on the opposite side of the board from where the connector is, uh, this is a good place to start. Alright, let's take a look and make sure nothing got disturbed. Wow, that came off pretty okay. Now the real test, do we still have our short? We do still have our short. So let's put that audio IC in a nice little home so we can remount him later. I guess now that we're in here, take off this tiny little dude and see if he's the bad one. He is also on VCC main. Man, those little guys are so tiny. All right, let's test again. Still short. All right, let's keep hunting. I guess we're gonna start looking around TriStar now and Tigris. Let's see if we can remove Tigris here. Wow. Where did that chip go? There you are. That was a real pain. Well, that little dude is gone. Where did he go? All right, we'll figure him out later. Let's uh, clean up our spot and see if we have relieved that short. Still have a short. Ugh. I have hunted and hunted and hunted for this VCC main short on a silly iPhone 5 SE. I have removed the audio IC. I have removed the little capacitor right up there next to the audio IC. And that one that looks kind of gray and dark, that's because I actually soldered a line onto it. I had to inject my voltage there to look for heat. I removed this little guy because he was also on VCC main. I then proceeded to keep hunting. I spent a lifetime removing Tigris. That was the most difficult chip I have ever tried to remove in my life. In the process, I did knock off one little dude, but I can replace him, no problem. And I still had the short, so I literally, after three hours, injected my voltage right there where Q2300 is, and I turned up the amperage a little bit more so I could find some more heat. And because I was ready to give up on this thing, I figured, well, how bad do I really want to find it? Well, I really wanted to find it. After finding the proper amperage and voltage on this guy uh, to create enough heat, I isolated that the heat was coming from right down in here next to the power management IC. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out which one of these capacitors is actually causing this full-on short ground. Don't ask me why I spent so much time on this, because I don't have an answer for you. But here is what I discovered. I know that it's in this area. Let's find it. Let's freeze this board. I 
little bit more. And let's turn on our DC power supply, see if we see anything get hot. Look at that little guy right there, right in the middle. Let's do this one more time. He is our third one up, front and center, boom. That's our guy. So let's dig him off the board and see if that solves our problem. Goodbye, little dude. And we no longer have, oh, wait a minute, do we? We no longer have a short on VCC main. So the good news is we cured it. Bad news is now we got to put all this crap back. And this is by far the most difficult board I think I've ever worked on. So it is very late and we are going to come back and try to put this beast together in the morning. Now it's time to see if we can put this thing back together and make it work. Okay, there is Q2300. There is Tigris. That looked good. All right, and that one looks real good. We are making some progress. All right, that little guy is in. I think that'll be our hardest one. Goodness. Let's give it a scrub. Okay, so we are putting the final touches on. Came in with a VCC main short. I did all of that work, crazy work. And we just are reassembling the entire phone because if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it is a no fix at this point. So we first removed a couple of caps that feed the audio IC. Then we removed the audio IC. Then we removed Tigris. The very first chip we moved was Q2300 and all of which did not relieve our short. We just pumped more electricity into the board and managed to find one single capacitor that was getting hot. We took that guy off, that was the source of our short. So we reballed and reassembled the entire phone. That was a lot of work for one teeny tiny little bad cap. And we're gonna see if this guy works. Oh right, we are almost there. Hopefully this guy works. And we have Apple logo, and we have maximum charging current, 0.96 amps on the old Porto POW. We got the tone. This is exciting. Super exciting. We have a passcode. We also have a little bit of a flicker. I'm not going to worry about the flicker. Make sure we don't have anything that's troublesome. And let's test out our phone. First, I'm going to call me. My phone is ringing. I'm going to hang up. All my speakers and microphones work. Home button function works. We have back camera. We have selfie camera. I think we got a winner winner chicken dinner. And all of that work, all of that work was for a tiny capacitor that I can't see that decided to go bad for no apparent reason. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and we'll see you on the next repair.